prototypes, they could be worth millions. I mean, they cost the auto companies millions to produce. But rather than get into a bunch of rhetoric about the story, just watch it yourself about this guy. He finds a 71 Mustang for sale on eBay and he gets to checking it out and finds out it's a prototype. Cool story. Hey, Bob Perkins. Now that you have the one and only 1971 Boss 302, a real factory prototype, what are you going to do with it? Sell it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> He better not. <laughs> I can't, you can't print this. You can't, this stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody say their name. Starting here. I'm Andy Hack. Bob Perkins. Mary Williams. Paul Williams. And I'm Kathy Hack. Uh, right, so what's a good title for this for this story? But the one and only. Jerry, I'm Andy Hack, and I'm the person who just sold the 1971. Boss 302 to Bob Perkins. Um, in 2004, um, I was just looking on eBay to purchase a, a 71 model Fastback Mustang. I called my wife over to the computer and I said, Kathy, you won't believe it, but this car looks just like that prototype car back in 1971, the Boss 302 that they never built. And I noticed the VIN number on it was 100053. And I agreed to buy the car. The car was in San Francisco at the time and I had it shipped to Wisconsin. Um, after I got the car, the, I looked at the photo. Well, I looked at the photos in the magazine. I looked at the eBay photos. Jerry, when I found out what the car was, and I talked to Marty Auto Works, there was a fellow working for Kevin Marty, and on the phone he said to me, "We've got very important information about your car." And I said, "It's not stolen, is it?" And he said, "No, no, nothing like that." And I said, "Is this the Boss 302 they never built for 71?" And he said. They built it, and you've got it. Only one. Yeah, I was at the, was at the Jefferson swap meet, and I saw 71 Mustangs, so I'm yeah. thinking, oh, I'm bored. There's no Ford parts here. I yeah. go, let me look through your magazine there. Okay, now, Jerry, now, what did he really say to you when he found <laughs> out that that was the car? He said, I found it. <laughs> yes, it is. He did. I can't remember everything, but, but I know he was really happy. Yeah. <laughs> the best thing is... But this car, is nobody ever restored it. If somebody would have restored this car 25 years ago, we'd have nothing. We would Nobody would have ever figured out what it was, or it would have been too late. You know, if we don't have this stuff on the car like it is now, it would have been really hard to document. Like if that door tag sticker was gone, and uh, we're going to find some neat stuff when we strip the paint off the engine bay. I'm sure. And the one guy goes, you know who's looking in your magazine? He goes, that's the Ford guy, the Mustang guy. He goes, no, I don't know no Mustang guys. Well, what we want to show is that the 71 Boss 302 was so far along in production that the service replacement parts were already listed in the Autolite Parts and Service catalogs. Can you give me some examples? I can give you a couple examples. We took a picture of the uh, page that showed the 71 Boss 302 exhaust system. It showed the unique H-pipe uh, and the muffler assemblies with all the part numbers. All those part numbers are listed in the Ford um, parts manual. They had to have spent millions of dollars on the uh, development and certification of that car. You know, they have to do all the testing with the car at the test track. They have, um, I'm sure, federal standards and guidelines they have to meet with emissions. And this stuff all needed to be done, you know, I would say quite a bit in advance of when that first day of production started. So they had to have all those parts made. They had to have all the items that were in the parts catalog, such as the the stripe kits, you know, because they had a unique uh, fender and deck lid badging for the Boss 302. Anything that was unique on that car with a 71 Boss 302 application was listed in the parts book already on the first day of production. 
Okay, we're gonna go up and hook some parts. Yep. Andy, yep. can you come up and hook some parts? Okay. So what parts do you have for this Boss 351? Well, pretty much everything. I wanted to show Andy the H-pipe. I had seven of these to choose from. That was the prettiest one. Just look at the bare metal, how well that was preserved over the years. The original part number tag on it. And what's really neat on this one, the engineering number, instead of being stamped back here on the lip, where it's hard to see once you slide the pipe on it, the engineering number stamped right up here. So what's different about this H pipe is one for a 70 boss or two. Uh, the the uh, left side exhaust manifold instead of going back, it turns down the the clear the new style 71 power steering. Will it still fit? Us, will it, if somebody came in a order and got one of those from a parts dealer, would it still fit a 70 boss or two? No, 71 boss or two only. But you found this in a in a Ford dealership. Right. Do you think there were people? They misordered it. The the parts guy didn't know what he was doing. That's that's like ninety nine percent of this inventory up here was a mistake made by a poor parts manager. And I looked through here and I saw the seventy one introduction of the Mustangs and sure enough, yeah, it um, it's got a picture, a black and white picture of, of the Boss three hundred two. Yep. Find the picture here. Okay, okay. All, all five of these muffler system or muffler assemblies are for a 71 Boss 302. Will those fit a 70 Boss 302? They'll fit, but they won't have the correct engineering number. Okay, well, some of those probably got sold to the public. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, new old stock left and right pair of the exhaust tips, chrome tips, Boss 351s. Had turn downs. The uh, 6970 Boss 302 and 429s always had turn downs. So this is the only Boss that had factory chrome tips. Are the ones on there now the ones that came on the car? They're original ones. So I have the entire exhaust system, including new old stock clamps. Um, here's the box that the brand new 71 intake manifold came in. It's sitting on my display motor over there in the showroom. It's not rare. What's the number? D1ZE9424-EA. Is this a service replacement for a 70? It could be, yeah. It could be. Mm -hmm. But it, it's actually different. The ports are a little different. So Ford Engineering made a little different. Yeah, the intake. 71 heads are a little bit different for the emission passages than on a 70. Okay. The exhaust manifold is a unique part number on the right hand side. What are you saying on this Boss 302 that this exhaust manifold is just a little different? Yeah, it's unique to the 71, so it'll clear the steering box. So it was actually never used on any production car except this one? Right. Brand new set of rotors. Uh, here happens to be a brand new set of black stripe kits for the Boss 302. How do they differ from 70? Totally different. 70's got the big stripes. You know, a C stripe and a 69, and this is more like a 71 um, Mach 1 Boss 351 style stripe kit. Looking in here, we're looking at the air cleaners. It shows it's listing the, the 71 Boss 302 with Ram Air as a D1ZZ9600B. All right, Bob pointed out that he's got the Ram Air Assembly that's unique. He's got the Ram Air Assembly that's unique to a 71 Boss 302. And this particular car, the one we're talking about today, we don't know that it was not originally produced with a Ram Air because it shows Ram Air on some of the invoices and it still has the Ram Air unique springs on the hinges. So in all likelihood, when the car was produced, it originally had Ram Air, probably had that type of a assembly and then for some reason for showing the car in Las Vegas the hood was changed and they went to a blackout we think trying to emulate the 69 Boss 302 uh, and they eliminated there were no hood pins and no no ram air. It was a flat hood. Flat hood but the springs remain. 
what springs? I don't know. What These springs. are the springs that the hood springs, the springs that control your hood when you raise it. The right on the hinges. Special so hoods, if, hood springs. If you had Ram Air to hold a heavier hood up. Have you got any of the, those special hood springs for seventy-one bots? Or They're talking? on the car. Take oh. a picture of the ones on the car. Still on okay. The car. Tell me that again. The Ram Air springs are flat on the top. They're not a round coil. And if we go and look at one of those 73 convertibles, this will all be rounded off. It won't be flat. So I made it a heavier duty spring. Okay. Hold the extra weight. Yeah. What do you think of those parts? You didn't have those parts, right? I don't have those parts. And uh, I was really glad Bob told me he had them because I knew the car would be put back to original condition. show units which must be changed before it can be sold. We need your help and I'm also advising regarding a future 1863 claim. Invoice 1F05R00053 shows body type 05. Shows engine as R. Windshield and patent plate 1F O2G10053 shows body type as O2, shows engine as G. That, that's that's the, the telegraph there, show, telegram showing for them to change the Boss 302 engine code to a Boss 351 engine code. Okay. The car, the first invoice shows and the door tag that the car was born up. 1971 Boss 302. Okay, Jerry, um, this one has a, this is the first invoice that we have on the car, and this is dated August 4th, 1970. And the car was actually produced on August 3rd, which is a Monday, but it was released from the company on the 4th, and that's when this document was produced. And what engine does it show there? And this one, it says eight cylinder Boss, but it it says 351 four barrel because at this point they'd already changed it to a 1F05R, meaning Mach 1 Boss 351. So the paperwork was changed at the office, though the car had already been built the day before as a Boss 302. The next invoice. Okay, the next invoice is dated December 21st. So if you compare the dates, the car had sat for at least four, over four months doing nothing. We think it was sitting at the Los Angeles assembly plant and, uh, and it finally got re-invoiced and now prices appear on it, whereas the first one had no prices when it went to the car show in, in Las Vegas. And at this point, um, they're calling it 1F05R, so they're still calling it a, a Mach 1 and they're calling it a Boss 351. Um, and otherwise it still lists all of the same options that were on the the first sheet, but they're starting to change the option packages a little bit. All the same equipment, but just different ways of packaging it, because uh, they hadn't decided yet how they were going to do that. Okay, what's the third invoice? Okay, the next invoice is um, dated January 8th, 1971, still carrying the Mach 1 and the R code designation. Um, some of these are just changing which dealer is going to sell the car. The last invoice, it was going to be sold to Villa Ford. Um, out in California, it was Orange, California, they decided to redirect it, it's this field diversion, and it, instead it was sold through Wilson Ford sales in Huntington Beach, uh, California, and that is where the car actually did uh, end up. Um, and again, this carries different pricing and different packaging, all the same equipment, just rearranged, and I'm sure they were getting ready to decide which dealer was going to get the car and how it was going to be configured. Okay, so there's two additional invoices that tell us very little because they're just internal credits from one dealer to the other because they redirected who was going to sell the car. The final invoice 
is this one here. This is dated February 25th, 1971. This is when Ford finally gave the approval to sell the car to Huntington or to Wilson Ford Sales in Huntington Beach, California. Now here they've revin the car 1F02H, which makes it no longer a Mach 1, just a sports roof, no longer a boss. It's an H code, which is a 351 Cleveland two barrel, still sequence number 100053. Um, Andy probably has a page memory. Well, yeah. and one of the things that really convinced me of the car was Andy has, well, they're out there now. There's a couple pictures of the car, of the Boss 302 motor in the car. So that we know it wasn't just a sticker sticker program where they canceled the car before they put the motor in it. That that that's really that was really important, and I can remember my comment when when Andy showed me the picture of the Boss 302 motor in the car factory photo. That's when I said, "Okay, I've seen enough. How much is it?" And and that's what I that's what I needed. That was probably from the time I first heard about the car until I bought it was, I want to see a factory photo of a Boss 302 motor in a 71 Mustang. And that put me over the edge, you know, then I, I figured that it's, it's got to be the car. Because you could have, I, my, my opinion when the car went to Vegas as a, as a Boss 351, it probably still had the Boss 302 motor in it. And they never raised the hood. See, Stop. that that's been leaded solid. See, there's a seam there between the rocker and the quarter panel, and the, well, this is actually the door post. That's all been leaded, leaded solid. Hey, I got a good question. Where's the rev limiter on this thing? It's a boss. It's a, it's I can show you the holes where it was mounted. Really? Yes. Right there. One, two, three. Lock rear end? Yes, yeah, it's a traction it's got, lock rear end. It's got the original WFD um, tag on it that's Boss 302 350 traction lock. And, you know, it's got the, on the transmission, I believe it's got the 1FO2G on the transmission stamped in the ear. It's also got the RUG AV which tag, is which is Boss 302, right. whereas the Boss 351, I believe, would have been RUGBJ. Yeah, I hear some giggling over here, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> are you getting baffled by the numbers? Oh, I always well, have. He just rattles them off. Oh, what's that? No. I heard pocket protector. Yeah. <laughs> there it there is, it right is. There. there. How about is. that? Yeah. The now that was a rare find for the Jefferson swap meet. Five sure. bucks. <laughs> uh, they were also going to build these. Uh, Boss 71 Boss 302s at the Metuchen assembly plant also because there are seven serial numbers in the database and they actually bought three of the cars. So they got so far as to actually building shells and then they turn around and crush them and canceled those seven orders. But, um, you know, they, they didn't just, uh, they had to have pilot cars for the Boss 302, they had to develop that stuff. So. Um, we know there was at least one blue one. Okay. So you're not but about an hour away. As he restores this car, will you be able to come up and kind of look at it? Are you going to get a ride in it? What's the well, situation? Well, Bob said that when we did this today, he wanted me to do a smoky burnout for the camera, and I said I would, but now I think he's chickened out. I'll definitely be here to see the car when it's finished. Well, finish. you see the two black marks in the driveway? <laughs> no. We did that yesterday when I did you really? put the plug wires on to make sure it was running correctly. And, and you didn't photograph it? No. Uh, that ruined my image. I'm not supposed to drive anything or right. everything's got to be winched down to the, off the trailer. But I will tell you this, this car will will drive on and off the show fields and uh, it's, it's going to be a runner. <laughs> the name of the story was the Million Dollar Mustang. I'm seeing the reflection that way. I'm trying to still find that. You're still looking for that elusive. Yeah, why is that? I mean, you're getting the window. Thank you.